Greetings, bird people. It's time for Out There with the Birds, the podcast that's both birdie and out there, with your host, Ben Lizdes and Bill Thompson III. Out There with the Birds is supported by Koa Sporting Optics, makers of the legendary 883 Promenar Spotting Scope. Visit sportingoptics.coa-usa.com to learn more. Additional support comes from the Reader Rendezvous Birding Adventures from Birdwatchers Digest. Come birding with us in our favorite places. Learn more at birdwatchersdigest.com slash rr. And now here they are, Bill and Ben. Well, top of the morning to you, Ben. It's time for another Out There with the Birds podcast. Are you ready to rock? I'm ready to rock. It's good to hear from you, Bill. Yeah, man. How's everything in Mount Horeb right now? Fantastic. We are in the thick of summer. It is uh, the beginning to mid part of July. Temperatures are in the 90s. The public pool is open. The birds are all being quiet on their territories. Now, are the birds and... visiting the public pool or what? I mean, is that... Well, you know, I, I, I go swim in there in the mornings. I get to watch the sunrise in the pool. I swim there from about 5.30 to 6.30 in the mornings. And it's cool because... You know, you you could see like the the resident. It's a it's in this adjacent to this oak woodland area. So the resident um, blue jays are kind of always going over the over the pool from their roosting spots at mm-hmm. night and calling and whatnot as the sun's coming up. And nice. so there's there's a, the regular cast of characters that hang out around there, um, which is kind of cool. That's very cool. Very cool. So yeah, what are we going to talk about this this uh, episode? Which is number well, sixteen, by the way. We're well into yeah. double figures. Yeah, it's a nice round number. Um, you know, divisible by four, divisible by two, divisible by eight. I'm divisible sure there's by sixteen sort of meaning divisible by sixteen. Right. Um, a square root. So you know, being the um, middle of July, we just wrapped up with the Fourth of July holiday, and of course, I, um, you know, I was thinking about our nation's symbol, the bald eagle, and and birds that we use in imagery and as symbols. Um, I thought, you know. It was a little interesting um, thinking about how we, ch- you know, how, how birds, we choose birds to represent things that have greater meaning, whether right. it's, um, you know, a country or a set of beliefs or whatnot, and how certain birds fall into certain yes. categories, you know. So, for instance, you know, the, the, the eagle, uh, going back to Roman times, this you know, was kind of held as this like, strong, powerful bird, easily distinguished in flight, mm-hmm. um, fast, you know, raptor, uh, really a symbol of power. And, of course, that probably has that, – those are the roots of why our national symbol ended up being the bald eagle. Right. As, despite the fact that there were objections from some of the founding fathers, namely uh, Benjamin Franklin. Oh, Benji. Right? He thought – he 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 thought the eagle was I forget what exactly it was something something along the lines of a little bit lazy yeah you know a, sca- a scavenger right and he uh, you know he, he was uh, purportedly said to believe that the the turkey would have been the wild turkey it was much more in keeping better. with the spirit of the early pioneers you know who settled yeah. America it's a That's thrifty right. wily clever bird a resourceful bird and mm-hmm. uh, yeah a- absolutely. And when you go back to the Eagle, Ben Franklin I was quoted as saying, was a bird of bad moral character. Yeah, of course. You know, eagles or... are scavengers. Mostly, you know, when when you watch eagles, if you have an opportunity to do that, they they do a lot of robbing of other birds. And, mm-hmm. you know, they hang around dams in the winter and scavenge the the dead fish. Some, someone might say that's not very sporting, you know? That's right. But at, at the point, someone, someone might say that it's very appropriate for government. <laughs> Exactly. Scavenging, kind of like hanging around, robbing people. <laughs> Bingo. Yeah. So, but, you know, so but it's obvious that uh, when, when you're looking for a, a, a national symbol or a, a banner to put up, it makes a lot more sense. That sure. It seems eagle. to be a better fit. Right. I course. mean, imagine having a football team called the Philadelphia Turkeys. Exactly. You know? So, so, <laughs> when, so when it comes. <laughs> when it comes to these birds as symbols, we gravitate towards the obvious choices, I guess. Right. Um, the eagle, which everyone was... knows that the call of the eagle is... Exactly, right? exactly. Okay. And the call of the peregrine falcon and the call... <laughs> <laughs> Turkey vulture. <laughs> um, well, this this whole um, kind of this, this concept of 
this bird as a symbol and, and why perhaps Eagle won out of the turkey was, was recently replayed this past spring in Oregon. I don't know if you heard about this, but, in, you know, the state bird of Oregon was the meadowlark. Mm-hmm. And um, there were... And <laughs> like everything these days, this gets political, you know, once the, the Republicans wanted one bird, the Democrats wanted another bird. I'm going to let you decide who wanted which bird. Yeah, right. But anyways, anyways, um, there was uh, this senator in uh, in Oregon who wanted to change the state bird of Oregon from the meadowlark to the osprey. Sure. You know, because meadowlarks, as he said, are too small scarcely bigger than a robin and not much to see if they're even around which is seldom you know where <laughs> whereas the other party the osprey oh the other was, party okay the the, 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 the the party of the metal lark i'm gonna say because right. like i said this is political of course right. um you know it would say that the, the chili rallied around a delicate little songbird of our state um it, and uh you know, we offer up this gentle avian friend to the talons of a raptor with precious little public process. Right. Ooh, <laughs> ouch. Yeah. Yep. We, and this, is another quote, this is another quote from a senator in uh, Oregon. We drive a dagger through the soft, downy breast of this feathered harbinger of spring. We should be ashamed. We, yeah, they should be ashamed. So did they vote to do it? <laughs> um, you know, they, they were trying to, they were still in negotiations in terms of, how they're going to do, whether or not they're going to let the school children pick or, you know, yeah. what sort of forum there is. There's probably nothing in the state constitution. Um, but it was, this is the the final quote I have from this. It says, we should consult the public. Don't validate the caprice of possibly well-intended intended individuals who wish to replace this gentle presence with a fierce predator, an instinctual killer who visits death on fish from above. Right. And, and I really, beg you it, to maintain the melodic song of the meadow lark. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and it's the western meadow lark, which, you know, yeah. has a an, has an different song than the eastern. Well, I, I mean, you know, I can see why people want, I mean, for a graphic representation, having a having an osprey would be, I suppose, better because the meadow lark's just kind of a plump member of the blackbird family that sits on fence posts and wires. And, you know, it's not known for its flight, although I love their song and I love their song flights. Meadow lark's nesting on my farm and right in all the farms around. And I love it. However, um, you know, the Osprey has its issues too, starting with, you know, <laughs> as do we all, I mean, right? And I thought, I thought in Oregon fish were pretty revered. I mean, that's, you know, the salmon and the, uh, a lot of the fish runs that they have there in the, in the, in the rivers in Oregon, especially in the coast, I would think the fish would be revered and you might not want to have something that's a symbol of killing fish. I don't know. I'm, like I said, I'm just yeah, a burger. I'm not a politician. Yes, but you know, once again, I think the the strong, large, fast, fierce bird symbolizes things that we probably like to be affiliated yeah, more yeah. Well, here's, with than the you know, little esoteric bits of yeah, metal larks. But I still think it's cool that, um, that a metal lark's anybody's uh, you know state bird. I think that's a that's a thoughtful, sensitive thing. Five other states. That was that was one of the arguments in, that they had in Oregon. There's five other states that have the meadowlark as a state bird. So why it's not the Oregon way? We should need to do something else. Eh, whatever. I mean, I would I would think yeah. all those five states. It's probably not all Western meadowlarks, which is what they would have. You know, it's probably several Eastern yeah. meadowlark states. And at least it's not the cardinal, for gosh sakes, which I think has seven states have the cardinal as there, including Ohio. I think. It- yeah, so. I, 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 you know, I like the idea though these common birds, kind of you know being state birds. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, people can relate to them, be it an oriole or you know our state bird here in Wisconsin is a robin. Right, right. And I'm sure there's probably half a dozen states that have robin as their state. I thought bird your state well. bird would be the Holstein. <laughs> <laughs> if we could, if we get away with that, I'm sure we would. So, so here's <laughs> a question I have for you: with birds and symbols. Why do people think? Why do, why do we have the phrase wise as an owl? Why do we have, you know, like there's, I think TripAdvisor, Travelocity, one of the, has an owl, a cartoon owl doing its ads now. What Do you think, do you think it's because owls have such big eyes, it looks like they're wearing glasses? Yeah. And we have this cultural thing where, oh, if you wear glasses. You're smart. Or maybe, it's, or maybe it's because owls are quiet and smart people 
tend to not be really loud. Right, which is why you and I are on a podcast <laughs> filling it full of talking right now. <laughs> and stuff. All right. Well, I, I just always wondered about that. And then another bird symbol, because you got me going on symbols, uh, bird symbols here, was canary in a coal mine. You know? Yeah. Like, that's an actual thing. Miners used to take canaries down because canaries would react to changes in oxygen levels and if the canary died you, you yeah. know or acted crazy you knew something bad was going to happen and i remember reading accounts of like the great uh there was a huge huge earthquake and solar eclipse that happened back in the time of tecumseh here in in ohio in the midwest and that would have been around the early 1800s and okay. Uh, so you don't remember this personally? N- no, it was just before I was born. But they said that the birds took off en masse, like startled into the air moments before this happened. So so I, I think canary in a coal mine is, is uh, symbolic of, you know, a warning sign or somebody who serves as a warning beacon to mm-hmm. something, to, to others. And, you know, that's a phrase that's used fairly regularly in modern parlance, but I wonder why canaries got brought down there. I mean, why wasn't it uh, a robin in a coal mine? Or get, bring a smart bird down there to tell you what's going to ha- Bring the owl in the coal mine. What? <laughs> so, it, where I, I was wondering then, why is, should the canary then be the state bird for West Virginia? It really should be, because, you know... <laughs> so, so, you know, I, I think of, um, you know, this, this strong use of bird birds as symbols and for people like you and I who are looking for birds everywhere I mean you know we're out at a family picnic looking for birds you know can't help ourselves at a baseball game looking for birds waiting for an airplane looking for looking for birds in all the right places exactly do you ever look for birds when you're at the liquor store or the beer department of your local grocery store big time I I have been known to buy something strictly based on it having a bird on the label. Absolutely. And, and that brings me to the, the next thing, which I think is the greatest confluence of birds as symbols for, and, and, and bird watchers who appreciate beer. So you know, we, we talked last um, episode about birders and music. Right. This brings birders to beer. Right. Two, two of my favorite things. So um, I know that you are aware of this, prestigious and i would say somewhat exclusive organization quite exclusive known as known as ibla ibla the international bird beer label association right um i know i know that you're you're a member aren't you i am a member i'm a proud member yes yes i'm a member as well and you, and you know that membership is not so so i guess let's just talk a little bit about what ibla is right and I, ibla is an organization that is dedicated to documenting the presence of birds or bird symbols on beer labels right so you got a a beer label if there is a silhouette of a bird a suggestion of a bird a caricature of a bird a wing of a bird Mm -hmm. these all count as an official each each label each beer label becomes a species and i was just on they have a a facebook group they used to have a website but i think the website's down um but they have a Facebook group. They have a list of all of the identified species mm-hmm. of birds on beer labels. And I don't mean like uh, ident- identified species like that's an Oriole, that's a Robin. But, uh, you know, in, 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 a, a unique label is a species, uh, a unique type of beer. They were, they've documented over 900 of them. Wow. And in order for you to become a member of IBLA, you have to document a new species, something that has been previously undiscovered. So it's not easy. You no, can't just go, you, you have to submit a, um, a new species. You mail in the label, the bottle. You can mail it full of beer if you want. You can do an empty bottle to get in there. Um, here are the requirements to have a new label accepted by IBLA. And I would encourage anyone who's listening to keep an eye out, you know, get, get Go, you can go to their Facebook page, download a list of that documented species, and keep an eye out for new species. It's not as easy as it might sound. No, and, and it pays to go and check species. first to see if you're, the thing you've got is 
you know, like you're not going to go get a can of Budweiser and that's got an eagle on it because the eagle is part of the symbol exactly. of Anheuser Busch. You're not going to get in with that because somebody already submitted that one, pal, and it'll be Except, on the list. Exactly. So here, here, here's the requirements of a new label accepted by IBLA. The label must include a bird or a portion thereof. The IBLA accepted definition of a bird is, quote, a warm-blooded egg-laying vertebrate distinguished by the possession of feathers, wings, and a beak, and, in parentheses, typically, but not necessarily, by being able to fly. And then they also went to ha on to have a, the IBLA definition of beer, wow. an alcoholic or non-alcoholic drink made from yeast fermented malt flavored with hops. Labels from cider, ginger beer, and wine are not accepted by IBLA. Ooh. And they no longer, at one point they did, but they no longer accept homebrew labels. It has to be a commercially available beer. Um, Labels are often difficult to decipher. Be sure to include with your label, bottle, or can a neatly printed annotation with the name of the brewery as well as country and city where the beer is brewed. Right. All submittals must be coming by your name, et cetera, et cetera. So jump through these hoops, find a new species, and you can become a member of, I would say, a relatively exclusive club. Very exclusive. Um, and once again, it's a great way to... Uh, Go bird watching while you're at the grocery store. Absolutely, and shout out to our late friend Carmen, who was one of the founders of the of Ibla, and uh, yeah, one of the Car great birders of Homer, Alaska. Yeah, absolutely. I, I will always affiliate her with the Ketchumak Bay Shorebird Festival, of course, and um, Ibla, <laughs> which is where I first heard about Ibla at the Shorebird Festival, and then promptly came home and told my wife. All right. I have I a new reason to drink beer. I, I have a new reason to drink beer. Exactly. All right. Here, here, here's 20 beers that we, we can just forget from now on, but I got to find some new ones yeah. here. So, and, 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 I, and I promptly went out and found. And you know, found you know how, how did you get in? What was the one you got in with? Well, there, there's a, a brewery in Spring Green, Wisconsin, down the road from where I live in Mount Horeb called Furthermore Brewing. And they have, um, they've always had, bird imagery on their labels. So there was a beer that had just a, a silhouette of a robin, you know, sitting on a stump. There you go. Um, and, you you know, some of the labels that get submitted, I mean, this is, you know, if there's a little tiny bird in the background of the label, right. you're in. You're in. You know, you're in. And that's how they got to 900 species. I mean, you know, they're, they want to grow the documentation of this. They come in, they come in from all over the world. Exactly. Exactly. So sometimes when I'm traveling abroad, I'll be looking around for, you know, beer labels with birds on it. It's a, like I said, it's a fun way to keep birding even after dark. And I remember being at the British Bird Fair years ago when they brought out the Osprey, Red Osprey Ale. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was Jeff Bouton and somebody else were like, we should send this to Ibla. And they both like ran off to do it. And I think that's the one Bouton got in for. Um, <laughs> I got in by going back and plumbing the depths of my beer can collection for a can of Schmidt's yes. beer that had a, some Canada geese on it. Yep. Yep. Would that be an extinct species? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. My final bird symbol uh, issue here is if you had to get a bird tattoo, which tattoo would you get? Which bird would you get? Oh, okay. Uh, so I've thought of this before. I bet you have. I have thought of this before because I, I, I've thought, well, you know, I, I've got, I've got a, a tattoo right now of a kind of a, a sun. And I keep looking and sometimes I think, you know, could you use something like a bird going around it or something? And so I think right. like, oh, what, you know, what, what would I do if I got a bird tattoo? And I think I would do a barn swallow. Nice. I think they just have, I guess, you know, I affiliate them with grace. And I aspire yeah. to be more graceful. I am not the graceful person. I aspire to have grace like a barn swallow. Um, no, but you're, you're like a loon, not graceful on land. But once you get in the water, I'm sure you're yeah. very graceful. You're like an otter. <laughs> Ring of bright water. <laughs> Maybe more like a penguin, I think. Because <laughs> I like snow, too. Um, That's right. So, you know, I, I, barn swallows have a neat flight profile. Um, it, it, they're just, you know, that or a chimney swift as well. You know, chimney swifts, like, like swallows, swallows and swifts are birds that, to me, 
when you see a still photo of it or an illustration of it, it has movement still. It's dynamic. And to yep. me, that would, that would make for a good tattoo, possibly. Plus, yeah, your Jimmy it, Swift, I mean, you, your love of cigars could fit right in there with it, too. Yeah, Because it's exactly. a flying cigar. Perfect, perfect. Either that or a giant turkey. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? I, you know, I know, you, I know favorite, you spent lots of time thinking about this. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I think about ink all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I've got none. Unlike you, my, my body is still pristine, but I believe that if I were going to ink it up, I would probably get my favorite North American bird, which is a redheaded woodpecker, which was one of my early birds that I identified myself as a young tot in Iowa. And in, I just love that bird in, for, in, for some in, reason. In flight, perched. Um, the bird flew up from the ground and flew up into an oak tree, and I was. No, like, I, I, wow, I want to know the tattoo. Is the tattoo of the bird in flight, or is it perched? Oh, I'm thinking flight. Got I'm it. I think flight. so too. I, I I think so too. You know, that's that's such a cool bird in flight, and you can see it from miles away, and you know, it, it's just it flashes black, white, black, white, black, white, and. I just I love that bird. I don't know why it's it's a bird that's vanishingly rare now in here in Ohio, um, and not doing very well at all. Um, I think competing, you know, getting out competed by starlings is per, perhaps part of it. Lack of cavities, people cutting down, you know, dead trees. But I also think because that bird is kind of a facultative migrant, that a lot of them probably, probably you know, the rigors of migration probably do a lot of them in. It's a bird that transitions to insects in the in the summer and they're just super cool birds. I, I just, I really, really love them. So that would be, that would be my tap. So, so bringing this back around to the metal lark versus Osprey debate, if you're to, to survey all of the bird tattoos that you see out there, right. You think we have more, more raptors or songbirds in the tattoo world? Oh, in the tattoo world, more raptors in the burning so. tattoo world. Yeah, you know, so you, you so might, so so if, so if you take out all the Harley Davidson tattoos and all of and all of the the obvious kind of raptor tattoos, maybe yeah, just the birders. If you were to look at all the birder the tattoos, the bird tattoos that bird watchers have, mm -hmm. you think you think we're still raptor heavy? No, I think probably we're going more more songbird warblers and stuff like that. I think and, so and too. Then, and then there, then there's like our friend Paul Riss, yeah, who for the punk rock big year had tattooed the, the names of the birds on him. So, I mean, he's just going straight for the information. Yes. Right. Yes. What well, is, and, and the aesthetic as well, you know. Oh, obviously, but I'm saying, like, you know, ta the yeah. tally. Like, exactly. you know, counting coup on all these birds up and down, you know. I thought that was kind of, that was daring and cool. You know, the, the, there are, I, I have seen so many bird tattoos now, actually, now I think about it, um, you know, amongst birders. Really, and, yep. and, and certainly I would say I've seen more bird tattoos probably on birders than I have bald eagle tattoos on bikers. Well, so, it's the company you keep, you know? I suppose, yeah, it is the company I keep. I, 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 in fact, I, I think on almost every birding trip, there's, you know, on a recent Hog Island trip, there was one of our participants that had an amazing cerulean warbler tattoo. And then yep. um, there was the director out there, Eva, had, a, you know, Charlie, a couple of Charlie Harper type um birds tattooed mm -hmm. and you know some mm -hmm. there's there's once again bird imagery people flock to it i had all to around say, us i had to say oh, it. You <laughs> way to go ben and and with that speaking of flocking i think it's time that we got the flock out of here because we're hitting the 25 minute mark all right i think so too i got a water park to go to today bill that's right man I'm happy not, meningitis I, I, i'm gonna be looking for bird tattoos at the water park and then when i'm done at the water park looking for bird tattoos I'm going to go to the grocery store and look for some bird labels on beer. Good for you. Now, listen, while you're at the water park, just remember this. That is not a Baby Ruth candy bar that's floating <laughs> in the pool. Just, okay? That's right. It's a Butterfinger. All right, Ben. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, Ben, please don't drown. We'll, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's all for this episode, bird people. Never miss a single episode of Out There with the Birds by subscribing to the podcast RSS feed. Go to birdwatchersdigest.com slash podcast, scroll down to Out There with the Birds, and click on the link on the right that says subscribe. We'll send you each new episode when it comes out. Special thanks to our sponsors, Koa Sporting Optics, and to the Reader Rendezvous Birding Adventures from Birdwatchers Digest. Until next time, good birding, and we'll see you out there with the birds. 
Hasta la vista.